So, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, welcome. I am Zdeněk Hanzálek, and I thank you for uh, watching the 19th installment of the scheduling seminar. So next uh, time we will have like 20th anniversary. And uh, I'm pleased to have a speaker from uh, Korea, Kang Bok Lee, and uh, let me ask Mike Pinedo to introduce the speaker. Okay, uh, Kambok, uh, Kambok got uh, a decade ago his PhD at uh, Postec. After Postec uh, getting his PhD there, he spent a number of years in the Northeast of the United States. He was a postdoc at uh, NYU, uh, was a research professor at Rutgers, and then I think a tenured professor at CUNY, New, uh, CUNY uh, City University of New York. Then he got a, apparently a very, very attractive offer to go back to postdoc. And as a good Korean, he is now doing theoretical deterministic scheduling research, but also applied. Because, you know, the Koreans, they want to actually make sure that their industry is fully optimized. So Kambok is going to tell us about the applications of scheduling. Okay, Kambok, uh, go ahead. Okay, <clears throat> thank you for a nice introduction. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, yeah, my name is Kang Bak Lee from Postech in South Korea. Today, I'm going to introduce a scheduling problem in steel industry and provide a solution method. And this is joint work with my PhD students and uh, Michael Pinet at NYU. Yeah. Uh, the summary uh, today, I'm going to introduce a practical still making continuous casting scheduling problem. And then I'm going to uh, introduce uh, a solution methodology called iterative greedy math heuristic IGM, which is quite intuitive method to solve the problem. From this uh, talk, you can get some very simple and applicable idea in many different problems. And based on our experiment, it uh, the algorithm works very well. Okay, this is the table of content. So I'm going to introduce the problem and then oh, I'm going to show you a uh, MIP formulation, which is quite general. It covers uh, all different features of the problem and then uh, solution methodology, experimental result, and the conclusion. Now, as an introduction, I'm going to show you the, the a world steel production quantity it is rapidly increasing. And also you can see several, uh, some up and down big, it means the, the steel industry is highly related to world uh, economic situation. And recently the, uh, the increasing rate is a little bit uh, decreased because the China government has a concern on the environmental issue. There's some pressure. So this is one article in 2019, China plan to toughen emission check on steel mills. That means there's kind of a pressure in the increasing the facility capacity. And also in another article in 2021, yeah, there's some restriction. So what does this mean? The expansion of the conventional facility is somehow limited. And the new technology for some green is, is, is oh, is, I'm sorry, not currently, is, yeah, currently inviable. That means we have to utilize the current facility. So that means the, the scheduling in steel industry is quite important. Okay, this is overview of the steel production processes. This is iron making from the raw material. We are going to produce molten iron. It contains some impurities. And then we can adjust its chemical component by some chemical or some physical or electrical some process. We are going to uh, adjust the, comp the chemical composition of the steel. So now uh, the this steel is called steel. Before steel making is called iron. Now it becomes steel. 
This molten steel uh, should be poured a specific machine called continuous caster uh, to uh, produce the intermediate product. Uh, slabs are one of the common products. After that, we are going to press this intermediate product to produce the final product. The coil or plate are uh, a famous product. In today's talk, I'm going to focus on the steel making and continuous casting. Why? Iron making is common process for all different products. So here, yeah, there are some optimization issues in iron making, but most of optimization problems are related to controlling. And then between continuous casting and rolling, there's an intermediate product. So these two problems, the scheduling problem in continuous casting and rolling can be solved separately. Yes, yeah, there are some trial to solve these two problems at the same time. However, there are some definitive buffers. Uh, however, the steel making and continuous casting, they should be processed uh, with very limited time buffer. So they have to be scheduled uh, at the same time. So steel making and continuous casting is called SCC. This SCC process should be uh, scheduled at the same time. Also, it is uh, usually the bottleneck of the steel production processes. Yeah, I explained the SCC process, but if you take a look at the detail of the SCC process, there are more steps. As I said, there's steel making process and continuous casting, but in between there are several stages called refining. It will further uh, control the chemical components of the steel. So some products need to be processed as a specific uh, refining stages. So I'm going to show you an example. A Gantt chart is, I think, is the best way to explain the, uh, the, the overview. We have several uh, uh, production units called charge. The steel making and refining uh, use the production unit called charge. This kind of level of uh, molten steel. And this molten steel this charge has its own route. The first stage must be uh, steel making. The last stage must be continuous casting. But these refining stages are kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, optional. So, but the, each charge has its own route. For example, charge number one has a route of steel making and continuous thing directly. But charge number three has steel making. Refine number one. Refine number three and continuous casting. And, but for the casting, there's a different production unit called cast. Cast is a series of charges. Here, charge one, two, this, the, the series of these charges is, it becomes a cast. So the schedule must be like this. Each, charge, you can think it's a drop, should be placed one of the machine in each stage. But in the casting machine, all the charge in the cast must be scheduled on the same machine without intermediate idle time. This is the uh, problem description. So now you can easily understand the uh, machine environment. What is it? Yeah. yeah. I just said charge in a cast uh, continuously cast without idle time. So you can say that this problem is flexible flow shaft because the overall uh, machine sequence is uh, the uh, stage sequence is determined, and and there are multiple machines in each stage, and each job may skip some stages. So you can call it flexible flow shaft with stage skipping and with some additional constraints. 
So now I'm going to uh, formally define the problem with parameters, variable, objective, and country. What are parameters? I have to explain the machine environment, SCC environment, and chart, and a cast. In SCC environment, as I said, there are multiple stages. So the first one must be still making, the last one is uh, continuous casting. This number of uh, refining stages highly depends on the, the plant. Yeah, each uh, uh, still making plant have different uh, facilities. Some company has only one refining stages, some company has five refining stages, etc. And each stage has the machine, multiple machine. These machines may be identical or uh, different, unrelated. And there are transportation times between uh, stages. And each chart has several parameters. Suppose charge number three has the route still making, refine number one, three, and continuous casting. It should be scheduled like this. And the processing time is given uh, depending on the machine. And there's a transportation time between two stages, this transportation time, but after uh, one charge is delivered to the next stage, it may be waited, but there's a maximum waiting time because the level of molten steel, it will cool down. So what should we do? We have to reheat this uh, charge. So there's a definitely the energy consumption. Uh, more than that, uh, if the waiting time is getting longer, there may be some issue in the quality of the steel. So that's the reason we have the maximum waiting time constraint. Uh, and there's a due date of each charge because this charge contains several, uh, it should be produced uh, at with form of them slabs and they should be uh, treated for the final stage. So they have a kind of due date related customers uh, a due date or further production schedule. So we assume that each chart has a each due date. Yep. Then cast, as I said, cast is a sequence of charges. And then there's a set of time right before starting of the cast. Yeah. So far I explained all the parameters. Now variable, what are variables? Definitely machine assignment because there are multiple machines. We have to choose one of the machine and each charge has a completion time in each stage. By the way, the due date is related to on the final stage only, continuous casting stage. Then what are objectives? Cast break is uh, uh, priority number one objective. That means usually we do not allow cast break. Uh, from the literature, some papers do not allow cast break at all. So it can be considered as a constraint, but for the modeling uh, uh, convenience, sometimes this cast break is considered as one of the objective, but it has very high coefficient. And waiting time, waiting time, yeah. The one charge is completed, is transported, and then maybe waited. This is waiting time. We are going to minimize the summation of waiting time because of the energy consumption issue and quality issue. And all in tardiness, there's a due date. If it is delayed, this tardy, it may affect the further schedule. So it's, it may lead possible delay uh, for the production. And all in is, yeah, we have to consider inventory. 
So we want to avoid these two. The constraint, yeah, very typical constraint, one of at most one charge at a time in each machine. And there are some uh, special constraints in continuous casting stage. One continuous casting machine for all charges in a cast. So cast has several charges. They should be scheduled at into one machine and there's no idle time in between. And as I said, maximum waiting time between stages. Yeah, I uh, searched some papers from the literature, so I can, I believe you cannot see, you read this one. So I summarized the, the literature review. We collected 34 papers within the last 20 years. The first one is Lixen Tang's paper in 2002. And we uh, set some categories for the analysis. The first one is assumption. The problem of assumption may change it uh, depending on the paper. And we are going to talk about problem and experiment. Most of papers uh, have the experiment because it, this problem is quite practical problem. Yeah, what are assumptions? Uh, there are in problem type, there are two types of scheduling problems were uh, studied. The first one is initial schedule. That means we are going to create a schedule from the scratch. Yeah, definitely all the constraint objective, yeah, this should be considered. But the other one is a rescheduling. What does this mean? Yeah, we all have the schedule like this. But at certain moments, yeah, we execute this schedule but it may be deviated. And by some reason, we cannot execute the further schedule. Then what should we do? We have to reschedule the remaining part. Yeah, this rescheduling problem, problem has additional uh, constraint part, uh, which is the yeah, to minimize the deviation of the original schedule. So, in general, this problem is more uh, general than this initial schedule problem because the initial schedule is empty. Yeah, in rescheduling problem, initial schedule is empty. The, it becomes this one. However, usually many things are fixed. So the number of variables is fewer in rescheduling problem. And the cast and machine in con continuous thing Casting, continuous casting stage, this assignment may be given. The reason is as follows. When we design the cast, we have to, sometimes we have to uh, follow the specification of the continuous caster. If the caster is designed to, design for a specific caster, that cast, cast must be uh, dedicated to the, that cast, casting machine. So, some papers use this cast and casting machine assignment is given. But if there are multiple and identical machines, then we can choose anyone, then we can choose this assignment as well. In our paper, we consider initial scheduling problem. We do not uh, assume this, uh, this assignment. That means we have to determine this assignment as well. So our problem is more general than the problem with this fixed assignment. And the problem and the environment problem, uh, we consider uh, many papers consider uh, the following objective. The first one is uh, earliness tardiness, because this schedule must be yeah the older production should be done in timely manner. So all in study is one of common objectives. And, but some all in start charting is uh, considered in charge level or cast level. It means the charge has a due date or cast has a due date. Some papers consider completion time related objective, Mexican or total completion time. Some paper consider waiting time. 
and the constraint maximum waiting time, different charge routes are considered commonly. And some paper consider the identical machine in the same stage or unrelated machine. And some people consider the controllable processing time. What does this mean? So as I said, the charge is done, it should be transported and wait and then processed, right? We are going to minimize this weight and there's maximum waiting time, right? Or also we do not allow cast in continuous caster. We do not allow intermediate idle time, but sometimes this is very hard to meet then we can extend the processing time a little bit. Yeah, some paper, so this in reality, yeah, it's possible. So yeah, this one is somehow related to this one because instead, uh, in, instead of increasing the processing time, we may meet, we may decrease the waiting time. And some paper consider this aspect. And the, for the data, refining stages are various, one to five, but the number of charges considered is seven to 900. It varies a lot. An algorithm, yeah, there are a bunch of different algorithms and different time limits. So in our paper, we consider all these studies in chargeable and uh, sum of waiting time as objective. For the constraint, we consider a maximum waiting time constraint and assume the different charge route, we consider unrelated machine in each stage. For the data, we consider three refining stages and the number of maximum charges in our experiment is 36. This is it depending on the, the number of machines, but usually it's a half day schedule or a full day schedule according to scale. We uh, introduce an algorithm iterative greedy plus the MIP, we call it I, IGM iterative greedy math heuristic and time limit is 600 seconds, 10 minutes. Uh, based on my experience, this is the maximum uh, tolerance of the practitioner. They cannot wait more than 10 minutes. Okay, what's the contribution uh, to the literature? We consider very practical elements of the uh, real world problem, which makes the problem harder. For example, we consider different uh, routes of charges, but the, uh, when the number of charges greater than three, only five papers consider different uh, route. Yeah, some papers consider maximum waiting time constraint or minimizing total waiting time, but the waiting times are considered uh, by as an uh, objective and constraint by five papers only. And we consider charging, uh, Honest tardiness in chargeable, but only four papers consider this aspect. Okay. Now I'm going to introduce some notation. I think you don't have to uh, memorize the detail, but some notation will be helpful to understand the following talk. We have definitely have the stages, stages. And we have cast, we are going to use J. And then charge, we are going to notation K. And as I said, cast is the sequence of charges. So omega J is sequence of charges. And for convenience, we define this set, set of pairs of two consecutive charges in a cast. So this in a cast, there are multiple charges. We are going to define this set, this pair, set of these pairs. And for charge has a route, Route means the sequence of stages, right? And then we also define the pairs of two consecutive stages of each route, or each uh, charge. So charge has different stages, different route. We are going to define this pair set. If you define this pair set, yeah, it makes the formulation easier. Then we have to have the machine in each stage and processing time, transportation time. And yeah, all this possible starting time at each chart. Yeah, we can pre-calculate it for convenience. And setup time is given and due date and maximum waiting time. We, yeah, we have to have the coefficient for the penalty. 
yeah oh yeah when we deal with this multiple objective we uh, consider just where this sum to minimize okay then what are variables yeah this all the variables that's it we have precedence variable charge k k prime in stage l right assignment variable uh, charge k stage l machine i right these are uh, these two are binary variables all are continuous variable completion time the idle time yeah definitely we are going to minimize it we uh, expect this to be zero and waiting time only in starters the formulation quite straightforward this four awaited some of these four objective terms the constraint is, is the assignment and relationship between a precedence variable and assignment variable and the completion time what the last stage we have to finish the setup time and we are going to set up the waiting time and this idle time in between in the cast and only starting as penalty that's it we have only 14 types of constraint that's it these are the following other domain variables okay now i'm going to explain the algorithm as the first step we can calculate the lower bounds how yeah we consider a sub problem of a single cast yeah in the original problem we has multiple cast but when we consider single cast then sigma j is the optimal solution of this problem then what does this mean? The in, in the empty Gantt chart, we are going to schedule this first stage, second stage, and, and then we are going to schedule it like this, right? This problem is much easier than the original problem because the problem size is much smaller. Then, since we only consider one cast, we can evaluate each objective. This is the part of the objective related to this cast j definitely this must this is the lower bound of the entire problem and also we can uh, calculate the desired starting time of cast j right if cast j uh, is start started at this time we are happy however it may not be possible because many casts are competing each other However, with this number, we can sort the cast. So low bound has two uh, functions. The first one is to derive a, a low bound constraint. The other one is we, we are going to make a sequence of the cast. Now, the first one, in iterative greedy, we have to have initial heuristic. How can we do that? An empty schedule, we put one cast at a time because we have the cast sequence. We are going to solve one cast at a time while preserving the former schedule. So we are going to schedule one cast and second, we are going to next cast and third cast and so on. I'm going to show you with an example soon. Yeah, in initial heuristic, we are going to have very good initial schedule. And next step is, construction destruction in iterative grid, right? But what are uh, the jobs to be destructed? We have to select some charges to be rearranged. We develop two techniques. The first one is DC, destruction construction on charge cast level. That means we are going to choose all the charges in a cast. The other one is this cast, we are going to choose charges in similar time period. So, when we uh, do this kind of uh, procedures, we are going to solve the MIP model again. So we are going to find a better schedule, it's improvement. Now I'm going to show you an example. This is very quite straightforward. So yeah, the overall structure of IGM is initial heuristic, this each cast, this chart, this can be repeated multiple times. If we have remaining time, we are going to solve the entire MIP problem. Yeah, initial heuristic. 
from the low bound computation, we have the sequence of cast. Let's say this gray, white, and black. We have to solve this single cast problem, gray one. Then we are going to solve the second cast problem by preserving all the machine assignment and precedence uh, variables fixed. What does this mean? So in the next solution, must this cast charge two must be scheduled in this machine. And this one and three, this precedence relationship. In other words, the binary variables are fixed. Then this we don't when we solve this white cast problem, we don't know it can be scaled earlier or later. Like this. And then we are going to preserving all the this precedence variable and machine assignment variable and solve this black one. So this black may be skipped in the first, in the middle, in the end, we don't know. But after solving the MIP problem, we can get the solution. This is the initial solution. So even though the sub problem considering a single cast is a still MIP problem, but it contains much smaller uh, number of binary variable, so it can be solved very quickly. Yeah, while preserving former schedule, what does this mean? We are going to keep the machine assignment and precedence relationship. Yeah, suppose this schedule is given if you apply the DC cast, that means we are going to choose uh, charges in a cast. Here, we are going to choose the, the white one because it should be scheduled in the earlier. These charges are rearranged. What does this mean? We are going to take out and insert it. Yeah, here to improve our objective, it can be scheduled here. This is this cast. So, this white cast are uh, conducted on DC. So the next one is gray and black. So DC charge, suppose this is the initial schedule. What does, uh, how can we choose the charges in DC charge? We are going to define time windows, this black shade, right? Then we are going to choose the charges whose completion time has overlap with this time window. One, uh, yeah, this, for example, this one here, this completion time is not included, but here this has overlap in the first stage, then we are going to choose the charge. Then we can take, uh, get rid of them and then insert it like this. So comparing the previous uh, schedule here, six, one, but, one six. Yeah, it can improve the the previous solution. And after that, we are going to slide our uh, time window, and we are going to choose the next group of charges, and we are going to repeat it until the end of the schedule. Yeah. I explained uh, the algorithm in two different ways. So for the first one is very conceptual way. The other was with an example. Now I'm going to use some, some notation. It's quite convenient way. So we define MIP parenthesis J prime. J prime is the subset of cast. So instead of solving the entire problem, we are going to use, sometimes we are going to solve the sub problem. And Z is objective function value of the schedule. And we are going to uh, use this notation, set of precedence variable P, precedence and assignment variable A. And we define set of constraint with fixed value C fixed then set of low bound constraint caliber of C and LB. And when we solve the solve problem, we are going to uh, feed these parameters. The first one is the initial solution. This is feasible and incumbent solution and set up constraint and the time limit. Then how can we explain the, all the problem uh, procedures? The first one is a low bound computation. 
we are going to solve MIP parenthesis J. That means we only consider a single cast problem. After getting the objective function value, we can include this one as a low bound constraint, right? Then initial heuristic, what does this mean? When we solve uh, this MIP one to J, that means we only consider the first J test and with several constraint, what does this mean? In the very beginning, when, when we solve MIP and one, here, J is the current loop and this is all the charges in that loop and sigma fix means the all the variables that are fixed already so current one and current one and all the previous one we are going to choose all this x variable precedence variable we are going to keep it from the solution we are going to uh, fix those variables and add the constraint. Similarly, machine assignment for the current loop for the y variable, we are going to assign the current value from the current solution. This, in other words, we are going to fix all the precedence variables values from the solution and assignment variables from the solution. Then DC cast, what does this mean? It's almost the same. So here, this in the current group, we are going to choose all the charges and charges not in this set, in this cast. We are going to define this one. Excluding this set, we are going to set the X variable with the current solution. It means we fixed uh, all other variables values from the current solution. This cast is almost the same. We define the time window, time window, then we can do the same thing. So this is the overall structure of the iterative greedy. Initially, we are going to uh, uh, execute the low bound computation, initial heuristic, and this cast, it can be repeated multiple times. This charges, it can be repeated multiple times. The entire part can be repeated multiple times. If we have remaining time with the current solution, we are going to solve the entire MIP problem. Okay, now uh, to evaluate the performance of the proposed algorithm, we set up the, the parameter for the data set here. For we define the random processing time still making, uh, refining and continuous casting. These numbers are from uh, my experience and some literatures. And then for the routing, uh, I choose the very random routing. Each chart has a, a two over three probability of skipping each refining stage. And then transportation time, 10 minutes between all machines. And maximum waiting time is set to be 30 minutes. Objective coefficient does cast either in between. We have a very large penalty. And the waiting time and all in tardiness, it has a, a coefficient, objective coefficient of 1.5 and 1 and 1. The problems for the problem size, we prepare three sets of uh, problem sets small, medium, uh, practical. And each side we prepare 30 problem instances. And then for the algorithm parameters, we have to set up the time limit for each uh, procedure. And for the, the number of groups, so DC entire group is four and DC cast two, DC charge is one. These values are set up uh, by preliminary experiments. Now, uh, yeah, the time window, this time window, right, is 90 minutes. So, yeah, the charge is processing times approximately 45 minutes. So, it may cover two charges in each 
stage. This delta means that the shifting amount, this, this window is shifted like this, this delta. Okay, now, uh, well, yeah, in order to uh, compare this algorithm with some other competitors, we are going to solve the entire MIP. And we prepare two genetic type, genetic algorithm type algorithm, NSJ2 and single, a simple genetic algorithm. The difference between these two is that this one, we are going to maintain this Pareto optimal solution. So we are going to search maintain this as a we are going to keep this one for the next generation but this one we are going to evaluate this objective because the, our objective is where the sum of multiple objectives and we have different time limit is 10 minutes for our algorithm or other algorithm have 20 minutes of uh, running time this is the result mip first in the beginning a small size yeah, it can be handled very well, but the medium size, uh, yeah, this one, MIP, and, and the practical size, its performance is quite poor. If the problem is getting larger, the performance is getting worse. Yeah, the, the, NS, the genetic algorithm type algorithms are it's quite moderate. In the small size, it cannot get an optimal solution, but the in medium size, its performance is similar to MIP. Uh, the practical size is uh, performance is around nine, slight more than nine percent. However, IGN, its performance is quite stable and is best among the all the algorithms we consider. So finally, the five percent uh, of optimality gap. Yeah, I prepared one example uh, to show the change of the objective function values and lower bound over time in a practical size. Yeah, look at the IGM, I know MIP case. Yeah, it takes time to get the good schedule, but after a certain moment, it cannot be improved because we are going to solve the entire MIP problem. And lower bound is increased, increased, and it's stuck to a certain level. There's a certain gap. Then these GA algorithms, yeah, their performance is, yeah, the objective function values are up and down, up and down. And so it's very hard to say which one is better. They have quite a similar performance. Then uh, our algorithm, IGM, yeah, it can get a very good solution in the very beginning. The lower bound has, we have very tight lower bounds. So even though our algorithm has a short term running time, but its performance is much better. Now I'm going to prepare uh, another aspect of our algorithm. I, uh, I want to see which step of the algorithm uh, impact the uh, final performance. So, this is average performance. So initial heuristic, it already has the optimality gap of 9%. So if you compare this one here, after 20 minutes, the genetic type algorithm has more than 9%. But in initial heuristic, we already have a 9% optimality gap. The over the iteration, yeah, obviously the first, it, first uh, iteration has a, more improvement. This is the first iteration, DA, DC cast, DC chart, this is iteration number one, iteration two, iteration number three, three and four, right? So MIP improvement, after getting the feasible solution, the remaining time we run the MIP improvement, but the, the improvement is just less than 0.1%. Right, so yeah, if you have uh, some shorter time limit, initial heuristic and DC cast and discharge, just one time, period, one iteration, it it can give you quite satisfactory solution.
Okay, in conclusion, we consider a very practical uh, still making continuous casting SCCC scheduling problem. We established a very general mixed integer uh, programming formulation. And then we propose an iterative greedy math heuristic and utilizing MIP and its sub problem. We do not use any other uh, MIP formulation. We use only one formulation, but in each uh, step, each procedure, we have different additional constraints. Some variables are fixed. We only consider a subset of variable, that's it. I think this is one of the advantages of this uh, approach. We just develop one MIP formulation, then we can utilize it again and again. And this IGM performs very well on different uh, problem sizes and its performance is quite robust. Uh, we believe this IGM approach can be applied to various problems since it used on uh, MIP and its sub problems. And also, we believe it can handle more other uh, uh, aspects of scheduling problem. For example, this hybrid flow shop, considering sequence dependent setup time and precedence constraint or machine eligibility constraint, all this can be handled very well. Even in the flexible job shop, more general machine environment, we can, we think this IGM approach is quite promising. Uh, this is almost done, but I want to mention one thing, why we choose this uh, MIP based approach. Because our problem has several constraints uh, that can, that they are very hard to satisfy with some meta heuristic approach because weighted time restriction and cast break, these are very uh, strict constraints. So if we apply the meta heuristic, yeah, we, we already developed some genetic type algorithm Many cases, the, the intermediate solutions are infeasible and we have to uh, develop the, the sub procedure to make it feasible or we have to have generate more solution, et cetera. But this MIP based one, we don't have to search. The MIP solver will handle it. So this is a kind of uh, nice features of this approach. Okay, this is the end of the talk. Thank you for listening. Yeah, if you have any questions, yeah, feel free. Okay, and, uh, thank you very much, Kangbok. Uh, I let all participants to unmute themselves. So if anybody has a question, don't hesitate to ask. If this is not the case, I can ask you a question. So may I ask you to go to slide number 33? I would like to know how do you define the earliness part of the criterion. So here we have earliness. Yes. And um, my question is, uh, do you measure uh, the earliness on the last resource only or? Uh, yes. Yes, so if you measure it only last resource, then a solution which postpones execution on last resource, uh, um, minimizes your criterion, but in fact, uh, you will need more space before the last resource. So if this space is limited, or if it costs something also to have like intermediate product before the last resource or before any, any resources, any couple of resources, then it's let's say a solution, which in fact is, is not so practical because uh, uh, in fact, we should also have constraints on the space between resources or have to charge also uh, this uh, storage between, which is between resources. Yeah, you said that there, it can be related to utilization issue because the last, for example, the last machine, all the, all the charges have the same due date then they have to schedule in this way. So this may be wasted, right? This is your concern, right? No, no. My, my concern is that 
if um, it's, it's if I will simplify it, it's relatively easy uh, to delay the task on last machine so that it's exactly in the time when it's expected to be in due date, right? Yes. If, if there are no common due dates, of course, right? So, so what you can do is that you delay execution of the task on the last machine by having intermediate products in the stock between one before the last machine and last machine, right? So then you can obtain better, better, better value of criterion if you just wait, right? But yes. in fact, uh, the price of storing uh, this semi-product between one before the last and last machine also costs more or less the same as storing the product after the last machine, right? So my question was, if you if you handle this situation, which which uh, which also takes into consideration the price of the stock between the machines, or let's say capacity of that space, right? So in reality, so there's no uh, space in the intermediate product. They are kind of molten steel. Okay. So they cannot wait uh, more than thirty minutes or one hour. I see. It's very limited, very limited. And it, it is given by some of the constraints here as well, right? Yes, yes. So it's by, by, by these timing constraints that relate to execution on subsequent, because it does, it cannot cool down, right? That's that's the reason. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That explains the, the, my question. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, any other question? Don't hesitate to unmute yourself or type uh, your question in chat if you want, and we can read it. So there is first question in chat. Yeah, go ahead, Andrea. I have a very quick question. Are the, are the test data available somewhere? Some form can we compare with your results if I want to have a student working on this problem? Can you make the test data available? Oh. I cannot hear you clearly, so. My question is, uh, is the test data available to be used oh. uh, for, other, for other researchers? Yeah, even though we generate the test data, yeah, we can share it. So, yeah, it's okay. possible. Thank you for that answer. And there is another question. Uh, in the chat, hello, what are your thoughts on solving using computational swarm intelligence, which is also a heuristic approach? So the question is if you can consider also swarm optimization, right? Yeah, actually we uh, also consider some um, meta heuristic instead of this math heuristic, but the, when the, the problem has complicated uh, constraint. In this case, uh, maximum waiting time and cast, uh, cast break penalty, and these types of uh, different uh, constraints, it makes the problem uh, has to have the smaller feature region. So any types of search type of uh, meta heuristic it easily result to, uh, lead to an uh, infeasible solution or very bad solution. But in this MIP-based approach, we can get a feasible solution quickly. Yeah, we definitely we have to uh, make it uh, smaller by with this procedure. So yeah, if the problem is quite easier and uh, the problem has a very wide feasible space, then meta heuristic, heuristic may work uh, better than this, but the problem is quite complicated. We suggest this MIP-based algorithm works better. This is my feeling. Okay, so so you are close also. So, so the, your feasibility space is small, you mean? So yes. But you have no deadlines, so. Um, or did I miss something here? So, so, so there are instances that are infeasible as well? No, I mean, the, when we uh, use the meta heuristic, for example, huh? the, the population-based algorithm, 
right? They have to uh, regenerate the, the upper springs. And then when we, uh, over the iteration, the, the, the upper spring, the solutions make, it become uh, easily uh, infeasible or it has very bad. I see, quality. I see. Okay, it, it generates easily infeasible solution with heuristics. Okay, yes. thank you, we got it. Any other question? Uh, by the way, this uh, result was uh, recently published in IJPR. You can take a look at the uh, uh, manuscript so you can see the detail. Okay, thank you very much. So if there are no more questions, uh, thank you very much, Kangu Lee. It was a very interesting talk inspired from practice. And I hope that it will save a lot of uh, money and it will save the world from, from lack of steel, right? And, and now let me say a few words about the next talk. It will be given by John Fowler from Arizona State University. And he will speak about scheduling problems in semiconductor wafer fabrication facilities. Uh, uh, in fact, there will be two talks. Uh, the first one will be given by, uh, by John Fowler and the second one will be given uh, two weeks later uh, by Lars Mann. So, so thank you for being with us uh, and uh, hope to meet you uh, in two weeks. And if not, uh, don't forget that our, uh, our materials are available on YouTube so you can easily uh, watch it offline. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Bye bye.